BC's Attorney General says it's disturbing and unacceptable that high-risk sex offender Randall Hopley was able to walk away from a Vancouver halfway house. Officials say Hopley went missing on Saturday after removing his electronic monitoring bracelet. Vancouver police suspect he was worried about a court appearance on Monday. The 58-year-old is now wanted on a Canada-wide warrant. Hopley was declared a long-term offender after his six-year prison term for the 2011 abduction of a three-year-old boy from his home. For a deeper look at this, we're joined now by Cash Heed. He's a former BC Solicitor General, former Chief Constable, West Vancouver Police Department, joins us now from Richmond, BC tonight. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Cash, for your time tonight. Always a pleasure, Sarah. Randall Hopley, you know, if you're remembering back to 2011, and I'm sure you're familiar with the story when it happened, uh, this feels a bit like a replay. The fact that he is uh, out there and has been since Saturday when he escaped. How does something like this happen? Um, how does it happen? Well, first of all, let me tell you, we've got to look at uh, this in two ways. Number one is we've got to try and get him back in custody as quickly as we can. But we also have to look at the question of why he was out to begin with in the first place. He's an untreated sex offender. He served his time. We understand there has to be some release at that particular time. But I think we have to rethink something like that. We have to look at whether we want to put him in a halfway house in a community if, in fact, that there are indications that he may not have uh, 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 will abide by his supervisory conditions. It's a long-term supervisory condition. So now you put him out there and look at the worst thing has happened and uh, those that we, uh, we often think should never happen actually happens. The second part is we've got to put in all of the resources to try and get him to do this. And again, if you want to look at that third part, look at why we're going through this again. He com committed a heinous crime against a young child and he's back out there in society right now, and he is a danger to society. I want to ask you about that. What sort of threat do you think Hopley, an untreated sex offender, is to the community? Well, absolutely. His intent was to get away. He cut off his ankle bracelet. He, uh, he fled the area. He knew he was going to have to appear in court the following day. He knew he was going to be breached based on uh, his uh, exposure in a public space. Uh, with a, uh, some young people nearby. So those are concerning points that we have to look at here. When he took that young three-year-old boy away, he took him away for a period of time. Albeit, we're thankful nothing serious uh, happened to the individual. But again, the propensity for him to continue on in his behavior was there. The psychologists, psychiatrists, all of those uh, need to be looked at to ensure that we had the proper resources wrapped around him because of the danger he posed to society. So when we look at parts of that, when we look at the fact that maybe we need to change our judicial system to ensure it doesn't happen, you got to remember the judiciary is independent, but give your head a shake in this particular case where in fact he breached the condition, yet you did not detain him in custody as was sought by the Crown Council that was presenting this. Cash, I'm assuming you're familiar with an electronic uh, monitoring bracelet device. Uh, I'm not. How easy or difficult is it to remove something like that? Well, it takes a bit of work. But uh, in my days in policing, we had several of these uh, individuals that cut off their monitoring bracelets. So we've got to look at some different technology with respect to how we supervise these people when they're out there in the public. The monitoring bracelet may have to be replaced with something more secure uh, so we know where he is at all times in this particular case. You said uh, to the, the independent judiciary, uh, you know, give your head a shake in terms of where we're at right now. BC Premier David Eby is blaming the parole board. What do you make of that? We need to point the fingers at a lot of people, not necessarily uh, one particular uh, agency. We should be pointing the finger at the provincial government because they look after the administration of justice here in British Columbia. The attorney general and the premier should be calling the chief judge in right now and asking them what the heck went wrong here. Why did we have a ruling of this nature that puts society at risk? We have a judiciary in place for a certain reason, and that is to protect the public. 
And in this case, it doesn't appear that they did so. And there's several other examples that we have to uh, look at. But we can't keep finger pointing. We need policymakers, we need politicians, we need people in key positions to make sure that we create safer societies, not just pointing the finger after the fact. Kashi, I want you to put your policing hat on for us, if you can. We're now day four that Randall Hopley is out missing. The, the search for him is on. Where should, should that search be happening? He went missing from a halfway house in Vancouver. We know he's very familiar with the, the Kootenai area of the province and as well uh, BC's border with Alberta. Where would you be looking? Number one is police have to have a dedicated unit that's going to hunt this individual down. A unit that's going to be technologically savvy to look at CCTV across the region, that's going to be able to look at if in fact he has access to a cellular phone so we can monitor that to find out where he is. You're going to need resources on the ground to start, start tracking him down from where he left his halfway house Saturday afternoon at three o'clock. It's a very public area. There's CCTV cameras all around. If you had to take some type of public transportation, we have access to that CCTV camera. If he went in fact to some other areas to catch uh, some type of transportation, we should be looking at that. We should leave no stone unturned until this guy's in custody. I've got to tell you, Sarah, I'm surprised four days later we don't have him in custody. He's not a sophisticated individual that has access to travel uh, around the world or throughout North America. There's certain uh, nodes that he's going to be used, for, uh, used to, that he's going to follow. There's modes of transportation that he's going to utilize. We need to look at all of that right now. And as I say, it has to be a dedicated team that has this as their priority. It cannot just be the public looking out and giving tips. That's all part and parcel of it. But we need people, police officers, that are going to go out there and hunt this individual down, take him away, put him in custody so he's not a threat to society. Kashid, former BC Solicitor General, former Chief Constable, West Vancouver Police Department. Appreciate your time as always.